Hi. Playing business. So I have a confession to make. I am an imposter. When I look in the mirror, I see a high school teacher. Fifteen years ago, I went looking for a place where intelligent people connect money to effective strategy to build a better world. What I found was social enterprise and its little buddy, Impact Investing. So I started to play business. So this was 15 years ago. I saw myself at the time as sort of a, a non-profit Mad Max, infiltrating the world of the crazy for-profit people. But again, that was 15 years ago. Now I have to update the image, of course. While playing business, I've learned three things. Impact is product, good opposes bad, and entrepreneurs are everywhere. So let's look at the first. It's absolutely critical that we quantify the efforts of our work, but we do that to understand the success of the enterprise. Impact is not for donors and investors. Impact is not a return on investment. While it costs money to create impact, Impact is not money. The innovation that we inhabit as social entrepreneurs is that we use money as a tool. We use money as a tool to sustain our efforts to create products that solve human problems. It's solving problems that's valuable. Solving problems is the impact. That's what we're investing in, and that's what we're earning profit to sustain. Impact resides in the lives of our customers and our communities, and it's delivered through our products. Throughout the presentation, I'll be providing some helpful Twitter content. Good opposes bad. So we've been having this argument in this sector for many years. Good versus bad, impact first versus financial first. I think this conversation is stupid and we should stop it. A social enterprise is defined by its ability to create good, and every social enterprise must earn profit in order to continue to exist. Whining about which one is more important than the other is an example of what Jed Emerson calls bifurcated thinking. And it completely misses the blended value, which is unique to social enterprise. However, there is a conversation I think we should be having, and that's good versus bad. In addition to a company's impact through their products, a company's business practices provide impact to the community, positive and negative. The first example, bees leave the hives, and they go to the neighboring communities, and they pollinate the plants. It's a good thing. And the second example, waste leaves the plant. It goes into the water stream, and communities downstream have to pay to clean that water. It's a bad thing. What we should want from all of our community, from all of our companies, is net positive externalities. So let's look at a couple specific examples. So good journalism and information is essential to a well-informed citizenry. These companies, News Deeply, ProPublica, Solutions Journalism Network, they contribute to a well-informed citizenry. Fox News and MSNBC make us stupid and intransigent. Access to quality medical care is critical to any vibrant community. Medicines 360, they focus on creating pharmaceuticals for women and uniquely they focus on ensuring access to those pharmaceuticals. Pharma bro. Pharma bro, he focuses on maximizing his profit and in turn makes his products more difficult to access. The fact that his products can actually save lives is irrelevant to his business model. Food and agriculture are fundamental activities of any society. In this space, we've done a great job of catalyzing and supporting social enterprises and impact investors that 
focus on healthy food and sustainable agriculture. At the top of any worst company list you can find, you will see Monsanto. Monsanto focuses on maximizing their profit, ruthless competition, and market monopoly. Again, the fact that food is their product is irrelevant to their business model. Fascinating things are happening in the automotive industry. There is a potential disruptive innovation in the wings for financial. And after this morning's presentation, I snuck this slide in real quick. I'm glad their logos had the two colors that made it nice. <laughs> so one of the things I want to say clearly is that the purpose of good business is to create good. And more specifically, the purpose is to sell impactful products and to create net positive externalities. But also, the purpose of good business is to displace bad business. Some more suggested Twitter content. <laughs> Entrepreneurs are everywhere. So Amartya Sen is a Nobel Prize winning economist. And in 1999, he wrote the book, Development is Freedom. In that book, he introduced the idea of human agency. He said simply, an agent is someone who acts and brings about change. He said, more importantly, that without agency, we are not free. Now, this is not free like freedom fries. This is free as in the freedom to be a member of the public and a participant in economic, social, and political actions. One thing that entrepreneurs do is they reject paternalism. And they reject the idea that to succeed, they need to be included. Entrepreneurs don't ask for permission. Black Lives Matter is an example of a population courageously declaring their humanity in the face of devastating oppression. Like great entrepreneurs, Black Lives Matter is not asking for anything. They're declaring their status as humans. And they're refusing to allow anyone to be a gatekeeper to the human community. That's agency. That's entrepreneurial. What I realized was the conditions that need to exist to have agency, that opportunity exists, that I can recognize opportunity, and that I can exploit opportunity, are the exact same conditions that need to exist in order to be an entrepreneur. And here, at the altar of the cult of the entrepreneur, we are in a bit of a rut as to what we think an entrepreneur is. The millennials of Black Lives Matter, they are entrepreneurs. The dreamers, the dreamers have shown brilliance, creativity, grit, and yes, unreasonableness in the face of intense opposition. The dreamers are entrepreneurs. And these women, these leaders, they are also entrepreneurs. I've had the opportunity to speak with each of these remarkable women, and each of them has no options but to create regenerative economies in their communities, in Greece, in Mexico, and in Lapland. What ties all of these entrepreneurs together is their values. They're entrepreneurs of a different mold. We're living whole lives in vibrant communities is the goal. I think the exclamation point is really important on that one. So, if we are going to solve the problems that are in front of us, business as usual is not going to cut it. We need businesses that have impactful products. We need good businesses that displace bad businesses. And we also need to take advantage of the new breed of entrepreneur. Thank you very much.